Can I first of all start by deconstructing the sentence? This is what academics do, of course. When we say, should the cap be lifted on, on university tuition fees, where? Where exactly? Because, of course, we have a complete mess in the UK. Uh, so if you're from Northern Ireland, you want to study here or vice versa. So that would be the first, uh, the first amendment, I think. And I have lots of visitors from various European countries, particularly the Netherlands, professors who are saying, oh, we're stuffed full with your rich British students uh, coming over here. So we should think where we want these uh, fees to be controlled, as it were. And also, any lifting of caps wouldn't apply to the private sector anyway. So, so that's my first problem with, with, with the motion. Secondly, universities, I no longer really know what a university is. They're, they're such a diverse group of institutions with such a range of, of missions. I remember being told by a vice-chancellor in Wales how sorry he felt for me being at Cardiff University. He said, if I need a new engineering lecture, I just go down and hire a car mechanic who's halfway articulate. I don't have to go across the country to find someone I can return in some, some ref exercise who's a brilliant researcher as well who wants books in the library, and yet I get paid the same for my lecture as you get paid for yours. So we're very diverse in, 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 in our structure. Thirdly, tuition fees. Well, obviously, it was a great mistake to call them tuition fees in the first place. They should have called them, as the Rees Review said, called, uh, described them, end-loaded, income-contingent, graduate endowment contribution. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd only stuck with that, we wouldn't be in half the mess that we're in. But anyway, having got problems with the motion that, that, that obviously I, I'm supporting in a way, uh, it shouldn't be maintenance, it shouldn't be fees that we're talking about. It is maintenance. And I think, again, the reviews pointed this over and over again. The fees, are, if they are end loaded and income contingent, then in a sense it's not so much of a problem. The loans that we've been hearing about, which are reaching in some individual cases gargantuan and un unreasonable proportions, which we're hearing from student loan companies, are not going to necessarily all be repaid anyway. If you took out the maintenance loans that people had borrowed from all of that, it would all look very different. And this is the issue. And if we're really expecting uh, students to be able to go to university for free, then I go back to an image we used in the Rees Review. Why are we asking the hospital porter to pay towards the education of the hospital doctor in such a way out of taxes, which means that other things those taxes could go on, like childcare for the hospital porter, cannot be funded. Now, the other issue that we have at the moment is school leavers don't understand bursaries. They don't realise, they don't know what they would be eligible for if they go to universities. The point about lifting the cap on university tuition fees is that you'll have much more money to put into support for the less well-off student, and this is absolutely critical. I'm really impressed by the care leavers in my own university. We've encouraged and supported them a great deal. They've approached our student services and said... We want to mentor children in local schools who are in care in order to tell them, we've done it, you can do it. In fact, there are finance, some finances support available for, for children in care to get through to university. That is life-changing. That's absolutely critical. But if we don't have more fees, then we won't have the resource really to do that properly. One of the things I think we were most pleased about was the Welsh Government supporting the Assembly Learning Grant, which went to, to young people, in, well, people of all ages, in full-time and part-time education, in further education and higher education. We weren't putting all the money just into your bog-standard full-time student. What about everybody else? So who should pay for a university education? Yes, the graduate when they reach a certain income, should make a contribution. Yes, the state should contribute. But I also think employers, in many cases, should be contributing too, through, through graduate apprenticeships, through sorts of degree courses that are geared towards particular industries. And I think there's a lot of scope there to develop that. And I think there's also a huge gap between the amount of state money put into graduates at the moment <coughs> compared with people who are not going to university. What about preschool learning? What about 
the huge number of children in Welsh schools leaving without any qualifications whatsoever. That's a national disgrace. We should be concerned about them. We should be focusing them on them. What about the resource we put into vocational education, both in terms of the state and employers? There's hardly anything for them. Look at other countries, and, and there's much more support for vocational training linked to employers. We need higher fees in order to give more support for widening access, to make it realistic. We don't want young people choosing particular degree courses in particular institutions so that they can stay at home and have a cheap version of it. Everybody should be able to be following their own curiosity. I have taught some students who are not particularly curious who just ended up in university because it was the thing to do, and it's a nightmare. So curiosity must drive what people want to do. And if this capital isn't raised to put into universities to be able to support widening access properly, then all I can say is you should choose your parents carefully. Thank you very much. Thank you.